Hello friends, subscribers and new viewers of this channel. In this tutorial we explain how to remotely access and remotely connect to desktop and graphics user interface of Linux Ubuntu computer from a Windows computer. In particular, in this tutorial we explain how to remotely access a Linux Ubuntu computer from a Windows computer through a local area network connection. The local area network connection is also known as LAN connection. That is, we are connecting two computers through a home Wi-Fi which is overseen by a router. You can also use this tutorial to establish the connection if both computers are connected to the router through an Ethernet cable. Furthermore, everything explained in this tutorial can easily be generalized in the case of connecting the two computers outside of a LAN network. That is, you can connect the two computers over the internet as long as you know their public IP addresses and some other address parameters. IP addresses and other address parameters can easily be found from the Linux command line. And here is a brief demonstration how remote the desktop connection is established. I'm currently on my Windows machine and I'm recording the screen on my Windows machine. To initiate the remote desktop connection, I'll click on start, start the remote desktop connection program. Over here I will enter the IP address of my Linux computer. Know that this is a local IP address, this is not a global IP address and if I click on connect, I will see this window. I will be able to enter my username. This is the same username I'm using to log in on my Linux computer and over here I'm entering the password and voila, here I am. I'm on my Linux machine. For example, I can start the terminal once again. You can see how the connection is fast. And to show you even better that I'm using this from a Windows computer, you can do multitasking, you can basically copy and paste command from Windows to here. You can do all sorts of things, right? And you can keep this window in a separate window. Then you can start LibreOffice. You can type something such as, hello, I'm typing this from a Windows machine. In this tutorial, I will learn, I will teach you how to establish this connection. Before we start with explanations and with installation of the necessary software packages, let's first explain how the connection is established. To establish the remote desktop connection, on the Linux computer side, we will install the XRDP program. XRDP is a software package that enables us to set up and use a remote desktop protocol. XRDP is developed by Microsoft and it allows us to remotely access and interact with the server's graphics user interface. XRDP is an abbreviation or an acronym for X Remote Desktop Protocol. On the side of the Windows computer, we will use Windows Remote Desktop Connection to initiate and establish the connection with the Linux computer. Ok, let's start. First of all, a login into your Linux computer. Then the next step is to open a terminal. Let's search for terminal. Here it is. Over here, I will resize this terminal such that you can see what I'm typing and at the same time you can follow this manual. All the commands will be given over here below. Okay, so let's start. Whenever you want to install a program or a software or a package in Linux Ubuntu, it's first very important to execute these two commands. That is to type sudo apt update and after this command you need to execute the second command that will upgrade all the packages. So here I will need to type sudo apt upgrade and this command might take a while to execute so be patient. The next step is to install the necessary packages. First of all we need to install XRDP. 
To do that, we need to execute this command. And as you can see over here, XRDP is already installed on my computer. However, in your case, you will see the installation progress. Next, we need to install these three packages and most likely you already have these packages. However, just in case, let's install them. Even if you have them, installation will not change anything. Okay, this was X server X or core. Then let's install X server X or input all. And then finally, let's install X org XRDP. And that's it. Next, we need to add XRDP to the SSL cert group. An SSL certificate or a secure sockets layer certificate is a digital file that verifies a website's identity and encrypts data sent between a user browser and a website server. In our case, we will have a host computer and we will have another computer from which we connect. An SSL certificate is a file that enables us or enables a website to use the HTTPS encryption which is more secure than the standard HTTP encryption. To perform this step we need to execute this command. Okay, next we need to start XRDP. To start XRDP we need to execute this command. Next, we need to check if XRDP is active. To do that, we need to execute this command. And you can see that it's active and it's currently running. However, we have to make sure that XRDP starts on the system startup. And to do that, we need to execute this command. Okay, now every time you start a computer, XRDP will be started and you will be able to automatically connect to that computer from a Windows machine. The next step is to go to the Windows computer and to check the IP address. With that information we will be able to set up a firewall on our Linux machine. So let's go to the Windows computer. Next, log in to your Windows computer and currently I'm recording the screen on my Windows computer. We need to find the IPv4 address of our Windows computer. To find this address, open a command prompt and in the command prompt type ipconfig and over here you need to find your adapter, in my case it's a wireless adapter and over here you will see the address. Now, we don't need the last number, we just need these three numbers. This is mainly because we will enable connections from all addresses that have the same one, two, three first numbers. That is 192, 168 and 0 and this address can be, for example, from 0 to 255. In this particular case, the last number is 10. Now, let's copy this address and save this address. I will save it over here in this manual file. Okay. Now, we need to go back to the Linux machine. After checking the Windows computer IP address, we need to go back to the Linux machine. Consequently, start again Linux machine and log in. We need to tell to the Linux firewall to accept the connections from the range of local area network addresses that contain the address of the Windows computer. That is, in this tutorial, we are not going to enable only a single address. We are going to enable a series of addresses that is, you will be able to connect to the Linux machine from any computer on your local area network. To do that, we need to use the UFW tool. UFW stands for Uncomplicated Firewall, is a command line tool for managing the Linux firewall. We are going to allow all connections on the LAN local area network addresses. 
However, we need to locate the port number of the XRDB program in order to do that. To find the port number, we need to look into the standard configuration file of XRDP. First of all, let's make sure that we have Nano Editor installed on our system. We can install it by typing sudo apt install nano. And after that, let's edit and let's look inside of this file. XRDP, INI, and you can see the complete path. This is the configuration file. Now let me expand this window and if you go down over here we can see the port number. In fact this port number is standard for any new installation of XRDP and most likely in your case you will see the same port number. Write down this port number since we will need it later on. Let's exit this file to do that, press Ctrl X and let's continue. Next, we need to execute this command. This will tell to the firewall to accept connections from a range of addresses. The range starts from this number over here and it ends until the maximum fourth number. I think the max fourth number is 255. And to specify this range, we actually use this notation. This 24 means that we are actually want to connect from all available network addresses that are actually denoted by this fourth number. That is, every address in this range of addresses will have the same these three numbers, this number, this number, this number, only the fourth number will be different. Then over here also we need to specify the port number. This is the port number we found in the XRDB configuration file. So let's enter this command and you can see that the rules are updated. Now let's enable the firewall And it will be enabled and in addition to this it will be enabled on the system startup. Let's now check the status of the firewall and we can see that we allow all the connections coming from this range of addresses to our computer and that's really good. The next two steps are very important. If you don't perform these steps carefully or if you omit some parts, you will not be able to connect remotely to the Linux computer. First of all, we need to locate this file and to edit this file. To do that, let me copy here and let me type this. And over here, at the top of this file, we need to add these two lines. These two lines will set up the connection such that once the connection is established, the proper GNOME shell session and current desktop session will be loaded. We need to put Ubuntu and Ubuntu GNOME. If you don't add these two lines, you might see a blue screen once you try to connect and you will not be able to start a terminal. So let's save this file. To save the file, press Ctrl S or you can press also Ctrl O then enter and exit by pressing Ctrl X. Next, we need to create an additional file. For that purpose, I will be using gedit. Consequently, make sure that gedit is installed on your system. You can install it like this. Then let's go to the home folder by typing this and inside of this home folder let's create this file called .xsession. Inside of this file we need to add only a single line that will additionally specify the type of the session that we are actually starting. It should be GNOME session and let's save this file and let's close. Now if you type ls-la, you'll see the file over here. 
Next, we need to find the exact IP address of our Linux computer on our local area network. To find that, we have several ways. One way is to execute this command. And if I execute this command, here is my address. It's 192.168.0.145. And make sure that you save this address, since we will need it. Another way to locate the address is to type ifconfig. After typing ifconfig, you need to find the type of adapter. Namely, you can connect to the network either by using wireless adapter or by using Ethernet. If you're using a wireless adapter, you need to find the section WLAN 0 and in this section you need to find the INET section and there you will also see this IP address. So do that and practice how to find the IP address. And that's basically it. Make sure that you save this address and another very important thing that you need to do is to reboot the system. After rebooting the system, if you log in automatically or if you just happen to log in, make sure that you lo you are logged out. That is, in order to connect to your Linux computer, you have to be logged out. This is very important. If you are logged in and if you try to com connect to your computer from another Windows machine, you will see an error. Consequently, reboot you can simply reboot the system by typing sudo reboot and after that log out and finally we are ready to test our remote desktop connection for that purpose log in to your windows computer then click on start and search for remote desktop connection and click on the remote desktop connection over here in this section enter the IP address of the Linux machine and be very careful, don't omit numbers. This is the IP address to be found by using the host name dash I. And before I click on connect, I need to mention the following. It might happen that first time you try to connect, you will not be able to do that. Namely, after you click on connect, you might see a blank a black screen. If that's the case, then you need to restart your Linux computer. And after you restart your Linux computer, you will be able to log in. I don't know, but sometimes it happens. This is maybe a bug or something. However, after the computer is restarted, you will be able to connect. So let's do that. So I will simply enter the address and click on connect. And after that, you will see this login screen. Let me do this, such as you can see that I'm actually connecting from the remote desktop connection window. Over here, you need to enter your username. This is the same username you're using to connect, or better to say, to log in to your Linux machine. And enter your password. And that's it. And if you click on OK, here you are. Here is the Linux desktop and you're currently using your Linux machine remotely. So let's test a few things. For example, let's try to start a terminal. You can see that it's super fast. And over here I'm starting a terminal and you can see, for example, if I type LSB release dash A, you can see that I'm on my Linux Ubuntu computer. You can